Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a new speed reviews for you guys. So I'm gonna be going through all the products that I've been testing out lately. I've got a nice little arrangement of products here. So let's dive straight in. I'm working around a lot of paperwork on my desk right here. Just really trying to get my taxes done, you know? Okay, so diving straight in, let's start with some skincare. So I have been testing out the REN Clean Screen Mineral SPF 30. This is their mattifying face sunscreen. This is a broad spectrum SPF 30. I got this on a boxy pop-up sale um, and I was working through a few other like open sunscreens at the time. So I've just recently opened this up just a few weeks ago and I'm really liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Um, it is a mattifying sunscreen. So if you have drier skin, you probably won't like this. It doesn't feel like overly hydrating. So if you have a more oily combo skin type and you find that sunscreens are usually a little heavy on your skin, I think you might really like this one. It layers really well underneath of makeup. I haven't had any issues with this pilling at all, regardless of what serums I use, what foundation I use, what primers I use. This seems to be playing well with basically everything. Um, I know you can buy this at Sephora in Canadian dollars, it's around $50, so it's not a cheap one, but I'm really liking this a lot. This is a mineral sunscreen, so it does have the zinc oxide in there. I really don't find this leaves a white cast. I'm really impressed with this, honestly. Um, the last few sunscreens I've had have either left a really strong white cast or they felt really tacky on the skin or, you know, the texture just wasn't quite right. So it does go on, you know, white, but I find it works into the skin, as you can see, like fairly easily. And yes, it's a matte sunscreen, but you can see it doesn't leave the skin looking like parched or anything like that. It just it doesn't leave like a glow or a shine. A lot of sunscreens I find that are being released right now are glowy sunscreens, which is great. Like I like a glowy sunscreen if I'm not putting a bunch of makeup on, but as an oily combo skin type, a glowy sunscreen with foundation over top and you know, all of the other layers just by the end of the day looks a mess. So I'm really, really liking this one. If you have been eyeing it, I think it's definitely worth a try. Um, maybe go into your local Sephora and see if you can get a sample of it. Really liking that a lot. That's really it for skincare for this round. Usually I have mostly skincare and a few makeup items. This time it's the other way around. So let's talk about this primer. This is the Yensa Tone Up Primer. Um, I have a few of the, a lot of these products, well, all of these products I have on my face today, but a lot of these products I used in my most recent Get Ready With Me vlog style video. I will have that linked in the description box down below if you want to see these products in action. If you like something that just kind of hydrates your skin in order to kind of prep it for like foundation, concealer, all of the things, it gives a little bit of blurring, not a ton. Um, I don't really find that it fills in the pores per se, but I do think that it blurs the area where I do have more prominent pores. It does have a little bit of a like kind of tint to it. However, when I apply it to the skin, I don't find it offers any type of coverage or anything like that, but you can see it's not like a white lotion, but it does have a little bit of a like flesh tone to it. Um, I don't know that that would matter regardless of what skin tone you have. I think it just blends out to like nothing, but it leaves the skin really hydrated and a little teeny teeny tiny bit tacky, um, just enough that I feel like it makes a good kind of base for your foundation. So I'm really liking this one a lot. I'm interested to try more from Yensa. I've heard really good things about their foundation. I would like to get my hands on that and see what that's like. Next, let's talk about the foundation that I have on today. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. I got this in a boxy charm. Um, if you guys remember that video, I was really concerned <laughs> about the color match. I have the shade 230N. Um, I did choose the shade. I went on and looked at swatches and I thought I was picking a shade that was going to be really good for me. And then when I got it in the box, I was like, oh no, it's way too dark. 
But as you can see, I actually think when you put it on the skin, it blends out really nicely. I don't use a ton of this. I find this is a really nice one to just use a little bit. It gives about a medium coverage. You could probably build it up to full coverage. I'm not really somebody that's looking for that per se. However, this has become very quickly one of my favorite foundations in my collection. So a lot of the foundations that I have are mattifying foundations and it's just not really my vibe anymore. Even though I have more of an oily combo skin type, I just really like the look of something with some luminosity. I just want something that looks like skin, you know? And I think that this one does. As I said, it's like a medium coverage and I just buff it in with a brush. I think it blends nicely with the rest of my skin. Um, I do find, so yesterday I had this foundation on. Yesterday I was at work from, I was at work from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. So I was at work for 11 hours. It was probably eight o'clock by the time I got my makeup off. So I had this on all day yesterday. And I did notice by the end of the day, I was quite oily in this region. However, it didn't break apart. Like if I would notice it to touch it, but to look at me, you wouldn't think, oh, <laughs> her foundation is sliding off her face. So even though it is more of a luminous formula, I don't find it to be so luminous that if you had an oily combo skin type that you couldn't wear this. I just powder my T-zone as I always would and it really does stay in place. It doesn't break apart on my skin. It's not breaking me out in any way. I think it has a nice skin-like finish. It is a little bit shiny in the T-zone compared to obviously other foundations that I have, but I'm really liking this. If you've been looking for a good foundation and you haven't tried this one, it might be worth a look. Next up, oh, this is, it's that type of packaging. I'm going to show you the ceiling. Okay, so this is the Iconic London Multi-Use Sculpting Face Palette. It has that mirrored packaging. I'm trying not to like show you the whole room. Um, it does get very fingerprinty <laughs> if that bothers you, just FYI. This was sent to me by one of my subscribers. Thank you again to Faith for sending this over. This was one of the BoxyCharm Choice items a couple of months ago anyways, and I had chosen something different and her and I always check in on Boxy Choice Day to be like, what did you get? <laughs> and I had said, I wished I could have picked both of the choice items that month. And so she kindly sent this over to me and I've really been enjoying this. So you can see me using this in that um, vlog style, get ready with me that I'll have linked down below, but I'm really, really loving this. So this is a cream contour palette. And let me tell you, this is very pigmented. So the first time that I used this palette, I went straight into this shade because I was like, yeah, that looks right. <laughs> it was so, it was so dark. Um, so this shade here is actually what I have on as my like bronzer contour shade. And I think it's really, really nice for my skin tone. I think I can dip more into this one in the summer when I've got more of a tan. This one will likely be something that I use more on clients that have a deeper complexion than me. And then of course you can brighten up up with these colors. I have used all of those as well in different ways on the face, but mainly I have this one on today and I just think it blends out so beautifully. Um, I just kind of stamp it on with a, with like a flat um, sculpting brush and then I buff it in with my bronzer brush. It blends in so beautifully. It looks so seamless. This is the thing about cream bronzers. I just think they blend in so nicely and you don't get the harsh lines that you get more so with the powder bronzers. So I'm really, really liking this. I do find, however, with an oily combo skin type, I really need to make sure I'm setting that down with powder. Um, if I want it to last, like I said, if I'm going to be here for 11 or 12 hours, I definitely need to do that. Today I didn't because I'm only working like a normal eight hour day today. <laughs> So I just did the powder in the T-zone and I think that it should be just fine, but I love this little palette. I'm gonna get a ton of use out of it. If you see this in like a boxy pop-up sale or you see it available to you locally um, and you've been looking for a good cream contour palette, I think this is a really good one. Next up, I've been testing out this concealer from Item Beauty. This is their Air Hug Concealer. I have the shade 110. I have this under my eyes today as my concealer. 
I have really been loving this. So I got this in the May boxy charm. I told you guys I would start testing it right away so I could let you know how it is. And I really, really like it. The shade is actually really good for me. It's a little teeny tiny bit peachier than what I normally go, but I think it's, it's a really good match, especially with that foundation that's a tiny bit darker than what I would normally wear. Those two together have been working really well. This is a really nice, like thin formula, but it gives really nice coverage. I don't find it enhances texture underneath of my eyes. I don't find that it darkens when I put powder on top of it. Um, it doesn't break up underneath of my eyes at all. It doesn't look crepey. Like um, the Dose of Colors one that I've been using, I find if I'm not careful with that one, if I use just a little bit too much, it really can look crepey underneath of the eyes. This one looks much smoother than that one. This is also one of those concealers where if you let it sit underneath of the eyes for, you know, 30 seconds or something like that, you will get a little bit more coverage out of it. I did a little bit of that this morning and I think it gave a nice effect. I really like this a lot. I think you get a good amount of product in here. It's 0.36 fluid ounces. It just seems like a bigger bottle than most of the concealers that I have in my collection. And Item Beauty is like not super affordable, but it's a more affordable brand at Sephora. So I think this is worth a look. If you're looking for a new concealer and you've been trying to find something new, I think this is a good one. It's wearing well on my 35 year old under eyes. So I think that says a lot. <laughs> I've also been testing out this Rare Beauty mascara. So this is, it just says black mascara. It's the Rare Beauty Mascara. Um, so I purchased this. This is like the mini size. I purchased this in my last Sephora haul. Um, I just had heard so many good things about it. Samantha March is always like raving about this mascara. And I feel like I'm on the hunt for a new like favorite mascara. And I have thoughts, okay? So I have thoughts. So these are my lashes. I do think that it gives nice volume and it does give a little bit of length. I do think like the tips of my lashes look a little blunt, you know? You know how sometimes when you put on like a volumizing mascara, it almost like balls up on the very ends of your lashes? I do find that it does that a little bit, which I'm not a huge fan of. I like volume, but I want like fluttery volume, you know? <laughs> It's really going to be like a Goldilocks situation for a mascara. So I do like this. I do find it transfers a little bit underneath of my eyes. Not terrible. Not like like the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara is like all underneath of my eyes in like five seconds. Or that Huda Beauty one that I tried a couple of months ago. That one was just awful. This one is more like towards the end of the day it's starting to just kind of migrate underneath of my eyes or like my concealer kind of looks gray in a way. Um, so I've been wearing it on just my top lashes and wearing something else on my bottom lashes and that has helped, but it definitely hasn't stopped the problem. So if you're somebody that deals with transfer, I would say this is probably not for you. If that's not something that you deal with, I do think this is a nice mascara. It just depends on the type of volume that you like. If you like more fluttery volume, this might not be for you, but if you like something a little bit more on the clumpy side, you might really like this one. I do think it also gives nice separation. It's, I haven't had any like flaking or anything like that. It's not terribly difficult to remove. That's something else that I look for in a mascara. I don't like waterproof formulas. They're too hard to take off. So, um, you know, it's okay. This one's okay, but I am glad that I didn't buy the full size. However, I will say, <laughs> this is the wand, by the way. It's got like a pretty traditional wand, but it's pretty fat. And I find because this is so short, I have a hard time getting, you know, close enough without touching my face with the with the wand. So um, I just think that's, you know, sometimes the problem that you have with these mini sizes. But like I said, I'm glad I didn't buy the full size because it's not my favorite. Let's talk about a concealer that I have rediscovered in my collection. This is the Pure Disappearing Act concealer in the shade light. As you can see, I do have pan in this. I bought this quite a while ago and kind of forgot about it. I used it for quite a while. I had at the time, I think been using it on blemishes and under my eyes and different things. And then my preferences changed and I preferred more of a liquid underneath of the eyes. And then I kind of forgot about this, but I've been having some really bad breakouts lately. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the breakouts that I'm getting remind me of the type of breakouts that I got when I used to eat dairy and I stopped eating dairy because 
it was making me break out. It was also causing other symptoms in my body, but particularly it was giving me like really bad acne. So I haven't eaten dairy in four years, but the breakouts that I'm getting make me, I'm like, am I eating dairy? And I just don't know about it. Cause they're like the big like cystic acne. That's really hard to cover and it's painful. Um, so I busted this thing out. This does have AHA in here. There is some AHA in this concealer. So it does make a really good spot concealer because it's going to kind of almost give a light exfoliation to those areas. So I've been using this on my more stubborn blemishes and I'm really, really liking it. And I feel like, why did I stop using this? I think, like I said, my preference has just changed. But what I like to do with this is just take a little tiny bit on my finger pat it onto the areas where I have, you know, breakouts. And then I just let it sit for a couple minutes and then I just kind of tap it in and then I press some powder over top. And it has a little bit of a t like stickier texture to it. So I find it really sticks on to the area that you're trying to apply it to and it stays in place all day. And I really, really like it. So if you've been looking for a good spot concealer, particularly for breakouts, I think this is a good one. Um, I was looking I was looking it up the other day to, to link it in that vlog style, get ready with me. And it was actually on sale on the Pure website. So I will have that linked down below in the description box if you're interested. It's not super expensive. It's like around $20 and I've had this for ages. It lasts a very long time. Next up, let's talk about this eyeliner set. So this is the Eye Method Beauty Winged Eyeliner Stamp. Again, if you wanna see me using this, go watch that video if you haven't already, but it comes like this. So you've got two different ones. I have this on today. I have all these products on today. Um, and you've got a right wing and a left wing. So you literally have, I don't know if you guys can, I'm trying to show you. It's hard to show you like the end of something. <laughs> so you've got, I'll just do this. It gives you like a little wing. So you just like stamp it on and then you've got an eyeliner on the other side where you can actually do your liner. Now, here's the deal. I like the stamp. I like it a lot. I used it again today. I've been using it quite a bit, trying to get the hang of it. I like the stamp. I don't love the liner. Now, it does stay in place really well. Um, it is nice and black. It's a nice matte black. It's not shiny. I just find that this is a little much. This is a lot like trying to draw on your face with a Sharpie. <laughs> it's just a little bit aggressive now. So I have been experimenting with this, like do I just like the stamp and then I go in with like my NYX Epic Ink liquid liner or do I actually like the liner that's on here? I've been experimenting both ways and I have sort of gotten the hang of this like fat marker. So it is all I used today for my eyeliner. I stamped it on and then I drew my little line. I just have to be a little bit more careful because it's like a stiffer marker style, I'm more used to a brush tip. So with a brush tip, you can kind of, it kind of conforms to your eye and you can kind of do like a long sweep with it. With this, I find I just have to be a little bit more, you know, that kind of way. So I do like this. I think if you struggle with a wing liner, this is a great tool to use. It's a great place to start. Um, I have been using it a lot. I do find it is fast um, because I do, I do, I mean, everybody, I think everybody struggles with a wing liner, right? Am I crazy to say that? I struggle with a wing liner and it's always on the mornings where I don't have time that I decide that I want a wing and then I F up the wing and then I'm sitting there like sweating, trying to get, you know, everything matching and trying to fix it and all this stuff. So I really like that I can just like stamp this, stamp this connect, you know, the lines and off I go. So I am really liking it. The more I use it, the more I like it. So again, I'll have that linked down below. I'm pretty sure you can buy this on Amazon. Um, it's great. I like it. It is also waterproof. However, I have noticed if my eyes, well, I have really bad seasonal allergies. Um, I do notice if my eyes water a lot, it will eventually kind of rub off. Um, but it takes quite a bit for that to happen. Okay, next up, let's talk about this highlight. So this is the Floss Beauty Highlighter in Sunbeam. I do have this on today. This is a really beautiful highlighter. I got it in, I got this in a subscription box and this is a really beautiful cream 
highlighter. I didn't realize when I got it that it was cream. I just assumed that it was like a powder. It does, it's very much like a cream to powder type of formula. It feels very similar to like the ColourPop Super Shock highlighters. Um, I really, really like this. It's definitely blingier than I expected it to be. So if you like a subtle highlight, you might not like this. It is quite reflective. Um, however, I do have it on today. And so what I did today was I just kind of patted it in with my finger and then I stamped over top of it with my foundation brush. And that just kind of tones down the level of highlight that you get. It just depends on how much of a bling you want on your cheeks. I find these days I'm looking for something that's more of a soft sheen than like a stark highlight. So I feel like you can get both out of this. I also thought initially when I opened this that it might be a little bit dark for me, but upon application, I really don't think that it is. I think this would actually work for a lot of different skin tones. Um, maybe not super deep skin tones and maybe not super light skin tones, but if you're kind of in that mid range, I think that this would work for you. And I really like it. I had never heard of Floss Beauty before. Next up, I have this liquid eyeshadow from Lucky Chick, and this is the shade Rose Quartz. I do also have this on my eyelids today. I just have a little bronzer in my crease, and then this on my lids, and the winged liner. That's all I have on my eyes today. It was very simple to do. Um, I like this just fine. So again, got this in a subscription box. I wanted this to be similar to the Stila Shimmer and Glows, you know, the more metallic ones. Um, and it is and it isn't. So you can see there, it's really beautiful. The shade is stunning. Definitely like my wheelhouse of colors. You can kind of sheer it out as I, you know, kind of did there. You don't have to put it on stark. So what I like to do to apply this is to either put a little bit on my hand or put a little blob on my eyelid and then just tap it in with my finger. It does dry down completely and it does stay put all day. I really don't find that this creases at all, which I really appreciate. The only thing about it is that it's not quite as smooth as like the Stila ones. I don't know that it's, it's not like it's meant to be a dupe for the Stila ones. It's just in my mind, it's so similar that I was expecting it to be just like that. Um, so it is a little bit more sheer. It's a little bit less smooth, um, but I think the color is really beautiful. It, it lays down really nicely. It sets down really nicely and it wears really well all day. So really, really liking that one. Wearing it lots. Something else that I've been testing out is the lip oils from Cab Cosmetics. The one that I have on today is the lemon scent. The other one that I got was the lime. They look identical on the lips, so I didn't bring the lime one with me today, but I really love these lip oils. They are just beautiful. I have it on today with a lip liner. It really feels like a, it's like a really hydrating lip gloss, you know? It's different from other lip oils that I've tried in that a lot of lip oils that you try, they just feel like oil. You just kind of put them on your lips, they feel nice for a minute and then they kind of disappear. These ones are not like that. They stay glossy, they stay in place, they stay on the lips for quite a while. Like I'll put this on before I go in with a client. I'm usually with my clients for an hour to an hour and a half and it's still on by the time I'm done with them and I'm talking for that full hour. <laughs> So I really love these. These are very much something that I could see like putting it in my purse, leaving it there, using it every single day. It's super, super hydrating, feels really nice. It's not sticky at all. Um, it doesn't give me that white ring along my waterline of my lip. You know, some lip oils can do that. They kind of gather in that area, especially when you're talking a lot. So really, really loving this a lot. Really happy to have these in my collection. And last but not least, I've been testing out this cheek and lip tint from MCO Beauty. And I have the shade Flamingo Pink. I do have this on today. This is an interesting formula. Um, I've been testing it out for a while and it, I, I've been testing out in a lot of different ways. So the other thing is I, I seem to have gone through it very quickly. Um, when I initially opened this though, it did kind of blob out. So I am really like squeezing the tube of toothpaste at this point to get some out. Um, so when I tested this out initially, um, usually with a product like this, I would just get some on my finger, tap it on my cheeks and kind of work it in that way. And I found when I did that, it really removed any coverage that I had on underneath. So if I put it over like a BB cream or a tinted moisturizer or foundation, whatever, if I tap it on with my finger, it removes that foundation underneath. Um, 
I'm not a I'm not a person that wants to apply something like this with a sponge. It's just not my preference. Um, so then I tried like a stippling brush, and I found the same thing. It either applied too much product to the cheek, or it removed the coverage underneath. Then I tried it with a dual fiber brush. I didn't bring one with me, but I'll put a picture of one here on the screen. The one that I have is from Luxie, um, and I tried it with that. So I put a little bit on the back of my hand, and I get I pick some up with that dual fiber brush, and then I start buffing it in, and that's working really well. So this is the shade here, which looks really loud and crazy when you first put it on, but as you work it in, you get this really beautiful, almost sunburnt shade that I think is really flattering, right? Like that tone is really, really pretty. Um, it's just a little bit fussy how you have to put it on. So I do think that this works best on like a no makeup makeup day. I did want to put it on today just so that you guys could see. Um, but in terms of lasting power, it is a tint. Um, it, I doubt that you'll be able to see much of it by the end of the day. However, on a no makeup makeup day, that's not really what I'm worth. I'm not really looking for longevity per se. So I, I think I've found a great use for this in my collection, but because it's a little bit fussy to work with and because it doesn't have the best lasting power, I don't think you need to run out and grab this. But if you got this in a subscription box and you haven't tried it yet, Try it with a dual fi fiber brush and let me know what you think because I think that's the way. I think that's the move on how to use this and I think it turns out really pretty. I think it looks really nice on the skin um, and I'm liking it a lot. So those are all the products that I've been testing out lately. It was a lot of makeup to test out actually. The skincare feels like very organic to test out because I just replace products in my routine with the products that I'm testing but for makeup you have to very consciously be like okay I'm gonna use this foundation every day for a week or I'm gonna try this in like three or four different ways and see what works best it's a very like specific thing to be doing anyways I had a lot of fun testing this stuff out I hope these reviews were helpful for you guys let me know in the comments down below if you've tried any of these if you've had your eye on any of these I always love to chat with you guys down there I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye.